Normally, uh, as far as I know, the people looking for this, oh, come on, this is not very important. Well, maybe it's not true. And we have different approach to looking for this small peak. One option is, of course, to use SP uh, cartridge, but not necessary. You choose the correct uh, cartridge because you know you don't don't have idea. Well, we have some idea about the compounds that you find here. Here, the compounds is looting more water. Here, less water. So you have some idea, but you cannot guarantee. If you use SP, if you don't find no compound, if you don't find compound, you say, well, indeed, we don't have a compound here. Or we don't have a compound enough to detect on the NMR. But not necessarily is true. Maybe you cannot absorb the compound on the cartridge. But we can uh, uh, trap on the cartridge. The second option is to use a fraction collector using time slice. You can slice this spectra and collect in the uh, fraction collection each slice. We move the solvent, elute again with the uh, uh, deuterate solvent, and you have the spectra. And you decide, well, I'm interested on this. If you are interesting, you can trap on using SP cartridge. But now you have more idea about which kind of compound you have. And the, ser the third option, you can do this not automatically, but manually. Well, you have a lot of, we spend a lot of time to do this. So this is the loop storage LCNMA, uh, one component called loop storage. Loop storage indeed is a fraction collector. Uh, but have some limitation. Let me show you uh, this uh, uh, accessor. This is the loop storage. What uh, we do, the, uh, the peaks comes, the, uh, we choose the slice or the peaks, and this volume comes into this tube. This tube has uh, 120 microliters. You put on this uh, uh, spare part here. And after this, you can send it directly to the NMR. Or manually, you dry the solvent, repeat again, concentrate the compound, dry again, elute with a uh, uh, deuterate solvent, and go to the NMR. So there are some options. One option is using direct, but using direct, we have the same problem when you run uh, on flow in MR. The first one, because you cannot concentrate your compound, minor compound, you cannot detect it. The second is, again, necessary to use a deuterate solvent. But I repeat this, the deuterate solvent is not the big problem. The problem is to find a good pre-saturation solvent pulse sequence for all the peaks. Uh, indeed, do not expend so many time pre-saturating the solvent. Of course, it's mandatory to use a cryogenic probe head and an excellent pre-saturation. Advantage, we don't have uh, a diffusion problem like in the, on the uh, a stop flow uh, version, and we can take it to the experiment if we have a sample enough. And all the process, this is really a, a good thing. This, all this process we can do automatically with reproducibility. This is very important. Like I said, we can slice these peaks you decide the region that you want, 
don't forget, you just have, if you use BPSC unit, only 120 microliters to collect. If you use a fraction collection, depends the fraction collection that you can uh, collect. We don't have this option, or you do this manually, pick by pick, slice by slice. But it's important to have automation and reproducibility. Reprodubi reproducibility, my goodness. Um, here are some results. Um, we take just these peaks, the small one. If you remember this, we have more peaks. Is this one, 1941 uh, retention time. Looking for these peaks. One option is collecting manually three uh, repetition. We have this spectra. Looking for this spectra, you can decide if you go ahead, go to the SPE or not. So, using the uh, time slice, you have a full screening of your spectra, of your chromatogram. So, you can decide which part you can uh, trap on the SPE cartridge, if you want. And here we make a uh, third repetition on the SPE. Of course, we have a better spec than on the, the top, because, well, it's more concentrate. And, of course, you can have 2D experiment. And normally, oh, the... Uh, Normally, uh, to the experiment that we do is COSI or TOXI, uh, AGSQC, uh, also AGMBC, and we can identify the peaks. So, this is the peaks. And of course, we can identify other peaks that I showed before. Oh, this one and this one. All these peaks we can identify. Uh, of course, we are working on this chromatogram because we have a lot of peaks here, but we have some region that no peaks. If looking for this region, 1851, I can't see peaks, any peaks here. Normally, people say, well, forget this. It's not important. Maybe it's not true. What we did, we trapped this, but don't forget, if you trap all the spectra, you cannot guarantee if on the SPE cartridge you don't have a compound. It's because I told you we don't have a compound here. No, maybe you uh, choose the wrong solid phase extraction cartridge. So, we trap this compound, but we have option to uh, uh, use loop, loop storage or manually. And we get this spectra. After trapping many times here, we have this spectra. It's not a pure compound here, of course, but we have a mixture. And, of course, we can identify the, this mixture using 1D, 2D uh, experiment. So, um, I hope to, to give you a, a point of view of our experience. Our experience here in our lab. Don't forget, in our lab, we are looking for the NMA point of view. And we have so, not so many facilities. We have some facility, but not all the facility that we want. My conclusion is the most used, useful technique combination, combination forget uh, MS. When I, I say forget MS, is not because MS is not important. No, because we don't have this option uh, uh, together with uh, NMA, put together, or if nation. But the, the most useful technique, technique, if you're looking for the point of view of NMA, first is LEC, 
fraction collection enema, time slice, you have a good view about uh, the compounds that are present in your chromatogram. After this, you can trap these compounds on the SP cartridge, and you also can choose a correct cartridge. Another important thing is you must to have reproducibility and automation on the press. Otherwise, you have a lot of work. And, of course, it's mandatory to have a cryogenic probe head uh, if we had uh, 1.7 millimeters better, but we don't have it, so we use 5 millimeter, or maybe a capillar enema. I would like to say thank you for many people, uh, for Patrick, uh, Patrick Gerardo from Nantes University, and uh, Luis Queiroz was uh, our PhD student. They are responsible to implement uh, ultra-fast NMA in our lab. Rainer Kassenbauer from Brucker in Germany, in Karlsruhe. Uh, Christina Daoli, also from Karlsruhe. Uh, Christina was uh, our PhD student also. Uh, he works in the Brucker many years. Uh, Heiner helped us with the new pulse sequence. Uh, Christina Daoli with the LEC and MA problems. Tiago Venancio is my colleague from the, the lab. Of course, we uh, work together. And also for the PhD student, Sergio, you have a very good skill in LEC and MA. Liege, Lorena, Elenilson, Clayton, and our postdoc, uh, Tatiana. We also would like to say thank you for the Brazilian financial agents, CAPS, FAPESP, CNPQ, FA, uh, FINEP, and most important, this uh, ENCT, Instituto Nacional de Ciência e Tecnologia, uh, which is involved the Natural Produ Products Group Research in our department. All the equipments, most of our equipment comes from this project. So uh, I'd like to say thank you for these guys, and of course, thank you for your attention. Yeah, this. Yeah, thank you, very interesting. Uh, maybe two questions. One about this uh, SPA and MR approach. Uh, is there any limitation for, let's say, the very polar compounds in the HPLC? Can you trap them well on SPA? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's possible because you can uh, send the, the, well, you can put uh, different cartridge, different, many plates with a different kind of cartridge. So you can direct, if you have idea which the cartridge is more appropriate for that pick, you can send these uh, picks direct for different cartridge, well, different support, of course. Yeah, you can do, yeah, automatically. You just, but you must to say which number must go. And for the ultra fast uh, 2D experiment that you show, uh, what is it? It's just one scan or how do you do it? Yes, uh, well, uh, normally you can use just one scan, but maybe, depends uh, the concentration, you can run two, three, four scans, not more than this. Okay, it's, it's ultra fast enema. Yeah, so that's, 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 how do you get the sensitivity? Uh, well, the, uh, the ultra fast enema don't use the same logical that the 2D uh, experiment. First, we eliminate the, 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 the T1. It's, well, picture of, uh, speaking, it's the same if you have, if you slice a tube, if you take a, for instance, 5 millimeter tube, you slice using. Uh, a gradient pulse and a pulse gradient, a, a pulse gradient and a gradient in the coil. You can slice your uh, the, the tube, the sample inside the tube, and take the spectra together in the same time. So this is roughly speaking the idea. Well, it's more complicated than this, but uh, this is the idea. And also you can run in. Uh, well, I don't say ordinary uh, spectrometer uh, should be a new one, a new, one, new, new version, 
uh, for instance, from Brooker, because we have experience with Brooker. It's, if it's advanced tree, you can run this, but you must to take care about uh, the Adiabat Kipos, because, uh, well, Patrick have a bad experience and burn the, the probe. And it's a, it was a, a cryo probe. So, well, but it's possible.